<laughs> Greetings, boys and gits, and welcome to Dread War Gaming. In this episode, we're going to be having a little look at the brand new RTLW Pain Boy. Um, and this is a really interesting, it's only a work in progress uh, image. I'll throw it up now and we'll have a little look and talk about it right now. So this is only a work in progress image. So obviously more is going to be done and judging by the claw there, I hope that there's going to be sort of more detail on that claw because it's still looking a bit basic in the shape of it. But what a fantastic sculpt. I'm really loving the boy that's been chucked over his shoulder with the missing leg and he's also got a missing arm as well and he's screaming in pain at the missing arm um, but this this boy obviously where he's got the leg missing there's a good meaty section there which I'm really glad that they've sort of left it sort of as sort of neat as it is you can just see the bone and the cut but you imagine if you want to paint that up in a sort of cartoon-esque style you could so you can paint that like a steak um, with a nice bit of bone for it or you can really gore it up and go adding some texture onto that and add in some uh, blood for the blood first or whatever it's called. Add some of that, or blood god or whatever it is. Add some of that on there, get it really gory and yucky. You know, you can make a really nice uh, severed leg. You know, it'd be awesome. Um, so there's lots you can do. Um, already I can see a lot of potential with the model. Um, it comes with a really cool little grot orderly as well. I like the tools around his uh, belt. I like the bone saw, that's very cool. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of people have sort of mentioned before about the Artel models, particularly with the Commandos, um, that they wasn't particularly fond of the sort of more upright pose that Artel's models seem to have for the Orcs. Um, to that I say, I kind of, I understand I agree in a sense, I'm on the fence, if you get me, because the old school hunched over Orcs that we all know and love, especially a particular generation of us do, they are seemingly being dropped by GW2 because the new Orcs on the new Orc buggies and the Orcs from the Warhammer range, the fantasy range, they all seem to be adopting a bit more of an upright pose. So I think what Artel is doing here is sort of preempting that happening and sort of leaving the sort of hunched pose behind. Although I would like to see if people are going to make more upright orcs to still maintain a little bit of that hunch, you know. So with this pain boy, from the front at least, it looks like, you know, he's he comes in at the waist a little bit and then comes up from there. From the back, it looks a little bit more um, flat though. But then he is carrying somebody over his shoulder. So, you know, like you, you're going to be standing in a sort of different posture then anyway. So, yeah, we'll see. I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting my hands on this. I haven't actually got my hands on the Iron Boss or the Commandos yet. I tried to make an order over Christmas and somebody that was doing the order for me messed me about. But uh, I'm gonna make an order. Uh, I'll have a speak with Artel and see if I can get these for when they do come out because they look fantastic. The Pain Boy, the Commandos and the Iron Boss and I do need to get hold of them because I am a collector of Orcs, especially third party stuff. I love all of that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on them. Now before I go, I just want to say a big thank you to a Yorkshireman from Yorkshire, um, Gaz, who sent me this Orkshire tea, which uh, anyone that watches the channel and watches Scarnia's channel as well will know that uh, in Ireland it can be particularly difficult to get hold of Yorkshire tea, or Orkshire tea as it is now. Um, so he sent me some in a post, bless him. Really, really appreciate it. So thank you very much, Gaz. But at the same time, something a bit more exciting for you guys, other than seeing me enjoy a proper brew, is that he also sent some... Oh, where are they gone? Where are they gone? They were just behind me. <laughs> Bold. But he also sent some old school white dwarfs. Two of them, in fact. And these two old school white dwarfs have got some particular relevance to orcs and freebooters and, of course, Dreadwire Gaming. Not to mention, on the back of this one, look at this fantastic artwork, look. Nice freebooter artwork, but inside this one, it's got a really fantastic article about freebooters, how they were back in the old Rogue Trader days. And there it is. So, it tells you all the different types of freebooters that were available for hire. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to do an actual episode where I go through some of this and actually talk about some of the old school stuff. I mean, you've got some awesome, uh, 
pictures in here too. Like, I mean, look. Awesome source. Oh, weapons. About two pages. Look. And it's a nice... I love the way that in the old school days, the imagery, it didn't all match up. It was from different artists. So it's different people's interpretations, which can lead to a lot of different stylized models and a bit of fun, you know, like some of these guys down here look like Smurfs. I mean, they're ridiculous, but you know, like that orc is awesome, you know, in his own way, you know, he's, he's different, but he's cool. And then he's entirely different to that fella, you know, which, you know, everybody recognizes that image because it's been reused since. But yeah, these are absolutely loaded with treasure for an Orky fan. This one as well. This one's also got a bunch of epic Orc stuff in the back, which I mean, this for me is really helpful for me for, uh, I've actually got a lung burster in 40K star, uh, size. Uh, this is handy for me because I'm looking at making maybe a skull hammer or the giblet grinder, but now I can see like how they should look and I used to own some of these actual epic miniatures way, way back. Uh, but yeah, they're good to sort of base things off of, or at least, you know, you don't want to, you know, make a massive version of that because you want to add more detail. But, you know, a good guide. And there's a, a guide to making orc um, vehicles out of card. <laughs> I mean, like, can you imagine GW actually promoting that sort of thing now? No chance. And making your own banners and stuff. It's just, these are the days when hobby was about hobby. See what I mean about like different interpretations of, of the artwork. So I mean, look at those orcs down the bottom there. Entirely different. So different. <laughs> That's what I love. Anyway, we'll take a proper look at those and I'll talk about some of the details that I find in them in another episode, another time. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, sod yourself. Uh, and I hope to see you again. <laughs> see you next time.